fixed cameras. Your successful completion of the demonstrated repair ultimately depends on the quality of your tools, the condition of your camera, and most importantly, your repair ability. The misalignment of a shutter curtain within a Canon A1 is generally caused by the connective ribbon becoming dislodged from the pulley that it tracks on. In order to reset the connective ribbon, the mirror box will have to be removed. And in order to remove the mirror box, the top cover will have to be removed. The top cover removal is covered in a additional fixed old camera video entitled, of all things, Canon A1 Top Cover Removal. Find it in the FOC Canon playlist. You will now see a spring washer a shim on top of the advance lever. Lift all free as a unit. Under the advance lever will be the advance cam. Under the advance cam will be a snap ring retainer. Using a pair of snap ring pliers makes the removal of this snap ring much simpler and avoids the possibility of the snap ring taking an unplanned flight across the room. Now the timer lever and the on off lock. Okay, enough of that. Down to business. With the top cover removed, remove the PC socket wire. The first mirror box screws to be removed are the two that are on either side of the viewfinder frame. They're countersunk cross point screws. Then remove the two screws that retain the viewfinder lens frame and the viewfinder lens frame itself. Also be aware of the flex circuit so that it isn't damaged. Next remove the flex circuit ribbon clamps. These are cross point screws and slotted screws. Make note of how the flex circuit is positioned over the post to make sure that it is properly aligned with the contacts underneath it. Watch for the rubber silicone cushion that creates the necessary tension to make positive contact. The set of flexible ribbon clamps that are positioned along the edge of the prism will also need to be removed. Move the snap ring around the ASA dial contactor. Often a stubborn snap ring will have to be reshaped after removal. With the ASA dial contactor lifted free, you can remove the ASA dial circuit. Three screws retain the circuit and make note of the spacer that lives underneath the circuit across the screw holes. Remove the two screws that retain the shutter speed dial cover and remove the shutter speed dial cover. Peel back the leatherette on the right side of the camera and the left side of the camera. You will need to possibly use some alcohol to dissolve the adhesive to get the leatherette to peel back without tearing it. With the leatherette removed, remove the five screws that hold the front plate assembly. There is a screw hiding underneath the LED that will need to be removed also. Shutter speed dial spanner nut and the shutter speed dial will need to be removed. And then remove the shutter speed dial circuit plate. Sorry about the dicey uh, camera work there. Hopefully you can see what you need to see. Remove the E-ring from the double exposure linkage so that the linkage can be moved aside to remove the control cam stack. With the switch cam stacks removed, you can now remove the circuit plate that lives underneath the switch cams. Three screws hold that circuit in place. Now the screws that hold the cover plate for the latch need to be removed. There are three of those, two on the edge and one in the front. With the cover plate removed, there are two spacer washers that need to be pulled loose so they don't fall out and get lost. At this time, take a moment to note the position of the shutter magnet charge lever. Okay, make certain that all the flex circuits are going to clear as you begin to add pressure to the mirror box assembly and pr pull up and out 
At the same time, the mirror box should clear the levers and come free. Keep gently manipulating the position of the mirror box and you might also have to encourage the charge lever to clear the housing of the of the camera itself to make it so it can pull past where it's hanging up. Once clear the lever the mirror box will come free. With the mirror box set aside we can now and, and also with the mirror box is still going to be connected with by the flex circuit uh, from the bottom of the camera be careful not to tear that or any of the loose flex circuits that are flopping around make sure they don't catch on something and get torn now we're going to address the the issue that is causing the shutter to crinkle and that is the ribbon is displaced off the roller pulley with uh, a tweezers it can be manipulated back into position so that the uh, shutter now tracks properly and will not uh, come off the track again. It probably came off the track from someone poking their finger into the shutter when they were loading the film. Typically they don't just pop off. Rather than give a detailed uh, description of how the camera goes back together, you should be able just to follow the parts that you took off in reverse. However, there are a couple of items of note before we uh, go to button the camera all back up. The first being that when you seat the, the mirror box, you need to be aware of the position of the levers, uh, particularly the one that charges the, the lower shutter magnet. Once they're seated, you can then uh, put a couple screws back into the housing and give the shutter a wind test to make sure that the shutter releases and winds as it should. Because if there's a misalignment, it mechanically won't work properly. When the front plate is pressed tight against the housing, check the position of the shutter charge lever, the shutter magnet charge lever. The correct position of the charge lever is for it to be on the outside of the magnet lever. Put a couple of front screws in place so as to hold the plate in position while you give it a wind and give it a test release to make certain that the camera shutter is functioning as it should. Another point of the disassembly procedure that is worth noting is the positioning of the cam stack switches and then the double exposure lever, lever uh, positioned properly. Once the, the lever linkage is in position, the post needs to be slid up into the slot so that the E-ring can then be put into the proper position. Also be sure you remember to solder the wires back and to put the, the door latch spaces in place. The leather can be glued back on with uh, just simple office stick glue and particularly if the, the leatherette's ply, still very pliable. If the leatherette is discolored in any way you can freshen it up with some vinyl cleaner. By taking a few notes during the disassembly procedure, hopefully the reassembly procedure will not be too difficult. And there is a remote possibility that an FOC video in the future might cover the complete reassembly. For now, that's all she wrote. Thank you for watching. Inspired? Check back for new video postings.